Hi, my name is Gordon Miller. I'm the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario, and I'm here today talking about uh, my latest report to the Legislative Assembly. It's called Laying Siege to the Last Line of Defense. It's about a new regulation that was passed uh, under the Endangered Species Act of Ontario uh, that really changes the game, and I did a, a longer video uh, on this. But I wanted to explain by this chart some essential concepts in this whole idea because it is a little bit difficult and this chart's intended it's in the in my report and it's intended to try to explain um, how you should manage endangered and threatened species uh, as opposed to how they do plan to manage uh, endangered and threatened species so let's look at the concepts this black line is just the current state of a, of a species and it's labeled as an endangered or threatened species we already know it's in trouble in some degree so that's the state of species at this level well, of course, we run our economy, we do things in society that impact the land, impact the habitat of these species, sometimes directly impact the species themselves. So, and when things are proposed, often we run afoul of that. We end up having a situation where if we leave things as they are, or continue to do things, then, we'll, then there's no protection for the species, the damage continues, and we get to some lower state of a species because we're uh, the species is experiencing uh, uh, minimized or adverse effects, like for instance, uh, uh, turtles getting run over on the road, new roads, or, or uh, species being barred from their uh, nesting areas, that sort of thing. Well, uh, in the best case, the best model, which is, I think, the model envisaged in the, in the act itself, uh, it, it says, well, we, the, the objective is to come up with clever plans to allow us to create a state after when we do something, create a state that there's an overall benefit, an overall benefit of action. That may be so if it's a species that uh, is a rare plant or a, a plant is uh, dying because of disease, maybe we find some, we dig it up from this location because we have to there and take it to another location and maybe from a new plant nursery generate some more species, some more individuals of that species at the new location. So it's an overall benefit. We now end up with more of the endangered plant than we had before. Or maybe it's enhancing the habitat in another area of land and saying, well now we have much more area for that, that animal to breed and reproduce and, and live. So that's an idea is to take not from the current state and find a state of overall benefit to the species. That's what the act envisaged. Unfortunately, what they've done with the new regulation is they only talk about minimizing adverse effects. That basically is, means that we're going to have the current state, we're going to let some bad things happen, and you know what? We're going to take some measures uh, to make sure they're not that bad. They're not as bad as they could be. You know, we're trying to make them a little better than really bad. But the point is that if you keep doing that, if you keep making decisions that allow endangered or threatened species to be adversely affected, you're always dropping this bar. You're always sending the, the species down the road to ultimately uh, extirpation from Ontario or extinction, and you're not taking them on the road to recovery, even in an incremental way. And that's a central concept that is at the heart of this discussion. Uh, 10,000 people commented on this regulation when they posted it on the ABR. The public Ontario is concerned. This can be changed. We can go back to the old model. It just requires a change in regulation, but certainly there's a big difference between having an overall benefit to species, putting them on the road to recovery, and, and allowing them to be degraded. This diagram can be found on page 26 of my report.